congratulations on the movie. Thank you. Um, did you know that this was a Cloverfield movie when you signed on? Like, how aware were you of Cloverfield and all the hype surrounding When it? I signed on, it was called The Cellar, and mm -hmm. then it was called Valencia. And then two weeks ago, it was called Cloverfield Lane. Is that when you found out that it was going to be connected to the other movie? Uh, yeah, I don't know that it is connected to the other movie, except in uh, some kind of in J.J. Land. <laughs> in Bad Robot Land, it's uh, they got something going on. So yeah, I, I'm the last to know, which is probably good. <laughs> Are you bad at keeping secrets? No, they, the only thing they asked us, you know, not talk about it too much. Uh, and I didn't want to talk about it too much because who wants to spoil the endings and stuff like that? And it's nobody's damn business. So if it's nobody's damn business, I'm good at keeping secrets. <laughs> um, so there's been a lot of viral marketing actually centered around your character, Howard. Did you have any input in that? I think I, I did some things a couple of weeks ago um, when I was doing some ADR work, and I don't know how much of it to give away, but I recorded some stuff. Oh, okay. Interesting. Well, I know that there were, like, messages from your character to his daughter yeah, and stuff. Yeah, so. stuff like that. You know more about it than I do. <laughs> um, so the tagline for Cloverfield, 10 Cloverfield Lane is monsters come in many forms, indicating that your character is one of those monsters. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how do you get inside the head of a monster and make him feel real? With a drill. With a drill? Uh, no, you, you, you have to believe, uh, no, you don't have to, you have to uh, wonder, find out what he believes in most of all, what he wants most of all. Um, he's got a very narrow scope of range. Um, and uh, make that the most important thing for the guy. Um, do you see him as a tragic figure then? I, in a tragic figure in the sense that he's got bad wiring in his head. Mm -hmm. um, outside of that, no. All right. He, he made his choices and yeah, I mean, he you know he, he probably could have been king of the world like he planned. Probably, we don't know, but uh, if he surfaced and he was the only male around, he would be the alpha male mm -hmm. for the first time in his life. Um, so you have a really interesting dynamic with Mary Elizabeth Winstead and John Gallagher Jr.'s characters. How did you build that dynamic on set? Uh, we trusted each other. I trusted them because they're terrific actors. Uh, and yeah, I had to have a very specific thing going with Mary Elizabeth and she is so damn easy to work with. Um, so is John. Uh, it was a pleasure. Pleasure going to work every day. That's good to hear. Yeah. Um, so, what's the most interesting thing you've, that you've learned about prepping for Doomsday? That I should probably prep more for hurricane season when it comes around. I live <laughs> in New Orleans, and uh, from June 1st to December 1st is hurricane season, and I, I, when I get home, I gotta start thinking about that. Having made this film, do you have any advice for surviving the apocalypse? Yeah, just enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna go anyway, so. Uh, Make the most of it. Take a lot of pictures. Take a lot of selfies. <laughs> Words to live by. Yeah.